tonight, Pat, in the ring already is Phil Brown. And there's no question that he has to be referred to as the opponent. That's the way he's been treated by the Cooney camp and by all of the publicity here in Anchorage. And he is in the ring now, but he should not be taken lightly. He has knocked out 11 of his last 15 opponents. He has not yet been beaten. He has had two draws. The only blemishes on his otherwise unbeaten mark. Weighed in at 217 pounds, 22 on two. But the man they have adopted here in Anchorage, Alaska, is the heavyweight from Huntington, Long Island, a long way from here. Jerry Cooney leaving the dressing room and no doubt feeling right now that electric moment that this is indeed reality. This time it's for real. for the bout is Bill McConkey. He will not figure in the scoring. He is from Anchorage, Alaska, a veteran fight man. The judges will be Mitch Pike and Jim Hinderer from Anchorage and Rudy Ortega from Oakland, California. Let's get it on. Scoring will be on the 10-point plus system as we see the tail of the tape. 28-year-old Jerry Cooney weighed in at 230 pounds. It looks very comfortable on a 6-7 frame. Phil Brown, 29 years of age, just over 6'3", weighed in at 217. Three knockdowns in a round will end the bout. Count will continue after the bell, except in the final round, and a mandatory eight count is in effect in the event of a knockdown. So Phil Brown, the man who is the choice to take on Jerry Cooney in Cooney's first comeback bout since that night in June, two years ago, when he was defeated by Larry Holmes in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tim, there's evidence of ring rust in Jerry Cooney. You're going to notice that he's going to he's gonna try to land a lot of punches. But what he needs to do, in fact, I experienced the same thing, to take my time and not to get over anxious and try to impress so much. Well, we talked about uh, the 
perhaps pressure to impress in the early going uh, Gail do you, do you think that's what Cooney will try to do well Tim it, it looks to me like he's going right after Brown he showed me a pretty good jab so far and that jab sets up other punches there's another good jab by Cooney watching Phil Brown and workouts and on tape he has shown a very good jab he's a good technician obviously giving away some pounds here to Gary Cooney and there's that big left hook Tim Brown's forte is his left jab now if Cooney can take that jab away from him I don't know what else Brown can do he does have a good snapping jab but so far it's Cooney's jab that's effective but what can turn the tables around Gil is the fact that if Brown is able to hit Cooney with a good shot and, and daze him he can turn his whole fight completely around that's right Ray especially with the first round and especially with heavyweights We are live from Anchorage, Alaska, round one, scheduled for 10. Jerry Cooney and White, Phil Brown and Red. Twice postponed this bout. Jerry Cooney more eager than anybody to get into the action, and here he is. Brown is showing Cooney a lot of respect, Tim. Didn't look to punch at all inside, looked to grab. Well, he knows Cooney's power well. He has been a sparring partner a couple of years back. Uh, Tim, he really wasn't a sparring partner. He worked with Cooney two days. A lot of people say he was a sparring partner, and that's not the case. He has been in the ring, nonetheless. Yes, he has. He knows what to expect from Gary Cooney. The concentration uh, plays a major role in, in a fighter's performance, and I just wonder what's going through Jerry Cooney's mind at this point. Uh, I'm sure he's looking forward to fighting for the title, but he has to get through Phil Brown first. Brown, on the other hand, is basically doing the right things, trying to stay away from the power of Cooney, but eventually, Tim, he's going to have to stop and uh, gain some respect. Under the 32nd mark in round number one, only taking that left hook to the body and over the right to the body. Backing up Brown in these final seconds. Brown needs to fire back. He's not doing anything. Cooney teeing off with body punches here as we go under the 10 second mark. Coming to the end of round one, scheduled for 10. Jerry Cooney and Phil Brown. Round number two live from Anchorage, Alaska. Jerry Cooney and White, Phil Brown and Red. A good start for Jerry Cooney. Timing appeared to be a little bit off, but he forced the issue throughout. Ray Leonard, uh, can you reflect back on your first round against Kevin Howard? Oh, for sure, Tim. In fact, uh, the round went by so fast. In fact, I wasn't sure about myself, and I wanted to get in there and look very effective. And I'm sure Cody, he's trying to become more aggressive. He wants to do a better job of throwing punches. Tim, Phil Brown is a big heavyweight. He's six foot three and 217 pounds, but with Cooney, he looks like a small heavyweight. People don't realize the size of this Jerry Cooney. Six foot seven, 230 pounds, and it's almost all on top. I look not a knockdown. Not a knockdown. Looks like they got their feet tangled up, and then Brown grabbed the top rope. I know Cooney's doing what he didn't do against Larry Holmes, and let's use his left jab, Tim. Brown has to show a little offense. He has to make Cooney respect him. Brown also has to follow Cooney's left jab back and then counter. What he's basically doing is just running around the ring. Just threw a combination there that Cooney had no trouble blocking. Left jab that Cooney's got through is bothering Brown in the second round. the jab of Cooney getting through. Now well, he's taking the jab away from the jabber. Left to the body. That bothered Brown as well. Left hook on the temple bothered him also, Tim. What I see, Gil, is the fact that uh, Brown is not too sure about himself. That's the understatement of the year, Ray. He really is showing Cooney a lot of respect. He's getting right with everything Cooney throws. Cooney has been coming forward since the opening bell. Brown has been retreating. We're under a minute to go in round two. Brown will get hit by left hook time because when he clenches, he pulls back with his chin up. Well, that's a big punch from Jerry Cooney. Well 
well documented in his professional career, even in the losing cause against Holmes. Under 30 seconds to go round two. Where I can stop all this momentum that Kenny Harris, all this is doing is throw a left jab out and stop this guy's rhythm. And that's something that uh, he usually does well. Well, we don't know. He's not using it here, Gil. But Tooney, Tooney is so big that he can't reach him with the jab, Tim. That's his problem. Final second to round yeah. number two. That was enough hook, Tim. Tim Ryan with Ray Leonard and Gil Clancy. We are live in Anchorage, Alaska. Round three of the Cooney comeback bout against Bill Brown. And there's the first solid jab landed by Brown into the face of Jerry Cooney. Well, things are going uh, Cooney's way. In fact, he's, he seems to be relaxed. In fact, with Kevin Howard, things were going my way. I got a little curious, and he sent me to the canvas. So Cooney has to be very, very careful to uh, make sure he, he does the right thing at the right time and not to rush himself. Well, he's still jabbing effectively, and they said that that's something he has really worked on in all of this period out of real fights, but working hard in the gym, about 400 rounds of sparring. You see an improvement in his jab, Gil? Yes, a big improvement in his jab, Tim. And Bill Brown, for the first time, tried to set himself and really let one go. Round three, scheduled for ten. Brown, Brown would not be able to take all those body shots. It's going to take his toe as the rounds go by. Uh, here's ring rust with Cooney now. He was flailing away that time. No rhythm. Reaching. Reaching a little too much for Brown. Right hand lead to the body, and that hurt Brown. midsection. Well, also, what's apparent as far as ring rust is concerned, Cooney can't maintain his balance. He can't really get his punches together and get his feet to, uh, to follow. A lot of times he's throwing his punches and he, he falls off balance. This is when Brown should uh, capitalize on the mistakes that Cooney's making. Body punches taking their effect in this third round. Brown doesn't want to be in there, Tim. I mean, he's not putting the fight at all. Right uppercut by Cooney that hurt Brown. Back him he's up. Again, what's doing the most damage has been the body shots. There is no more movement in Phil Brown. In fact, he's basically a stationary target. And this is when Jerry Cooney just uh, demolishes his opponent. Brown's mouth is wide open. He's tired. I guess those body shots took everything out of him. Under a minute to go in round number three, a scheduled 10-rounder. Jerry Cooney trying to get back into the top ten of the heavyweight. Another shot at a world championship. Hey, uh, watch your head. Come on, come on. Alex. You know, when you're always watch chasing the other guy, it's hard to hit him with a solid point. Once in a while, Cooney should faint. Try to make Brown throw something. There's a good combination underneath and over, and he hurt Brown with it. Left to the body, left to the head from Cooney. Banging away with that big left hook of his. To come up for the next round, Tim. I mean, he does not seem to be into the fight at all. And he just missed with a right uppercut. They have round two right in. He's just surviving. Just trying to survive. Brown looks a little wobbly like already. Final seconds of the third round. Gary Cooney banging away at will on Philip Brown. They're going to stay here between rounds. Bill Brown. J.C. Davis, his trainer, in there to administer to him, and he looks like a tired fighter, and he's only been through three rounds, but the body punching of Jerry Cooney has taken an obvious effect. You can see his mouth open here. And then perhaps the most damaging punch was a left uppercut right there. And he doubled up on it, and you could see Brown was backed into the ropes. So Jerry Cooney, while his timing appears to be a little off, as one might expect, no real action in two years, nonetheless has been aggressive, and the jab has looked good for him. Yep. Tim, yes, his jab has looked good, and his timing is off, but that's partially due to the fact that Philip Brown never initiates any action, and it's really hard to nail a guy when he's just trying to stay and he's not trying to win. Ray, what's your assessment here? Three rounds in, uh, again, relating back to your fight against Kevin Howard. Can you put your, your body and your mind in the, the position of Jerry Cooney at this point? Yes, I can, Tim. In fact, you still can't tell. It's too early, it's too premature to tell. I mean, you have to go into the later rounds. Uh, fatigue has to set in. You have to get in trouble and uh, work your way out. So I'm waiting for, for Phil Brown. In fact, I've been disappointed because he's a better fighter than he's been showing. Well, there's the Brown jab. He's that he knows how to throw it, but he's been a little short with it. 
Well, Tim, he's jabbing at an awful big target, and he doesn't want to hang out there and get caught with the counter punch. That's his problem. Joe Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tim Ryan. We are live from Anchorage, Alaska. The return of Jerry Cooney after a two-year layoff. Now Brown is starting to use that jab now. He has to keep it up. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Sugar Ray Leonard. Here is Jerry Cooney, who has just won his comeback fight, a four-round knockout over Phil Brown. Let's take a look at that fourth round, the uh, conclusion of the bout. Your jab was very effective, even in the early going, while you yourself said your rhythm was off a little. You jabbed effectively. Gil Clancy thinks that's an improvement in your in your uh, boxing ability over this two-year layoff, uh, Jerry. But it seemed to me here in round four that you knew you were in control. Well, yeah, I thought my gym was out of range a little bit, but... I guess that's from a long way up. We worked very hard, Victor and I, in the gym and uh, working on defense and uh, different combinations. I uh, started a new thing this time, worked with uh, martial artist uh, expert Richie Barathe with a weight training, uh, weight training program that helped me very much with my strength and my speed. And I think we're all finally put it all together working as a team. And we want to keep on fighting and winning and do, do what's right. The most damaging blow early in this round was a left uppercut that really staggered Brown. And then the finishing blows were the famous Cooney left hooks. Well, I, hit, I caught him with right hands. I was catching with right hands, Tim. I, I, uh, I caught him with some right, uh, overhand rights, and uh, it seemed to have make him go down. If you watch the round, uh, the right hand, I've been working on the right hand a lot, both with Victor, who is the teacher who's working under and over, building up my strength, and Richard Barrett on the weight training. Looks like I had to get from a mad dog knee. Somebody back in Huntington know what I'm talking about here. How do you like what you see here? 
Well, I feel good. I feel a little bit out of range. I should have been uh, moving sideways a little more. Uh, tick tock as Victor has been working with me, bending side to side. But uh, I was just trying to w wait to set up for the right shot. My defense was pretty good there. Still got a lot of work. I felt the rust. I, I, coming into the fight, I really didn't know what rust was, but I found out what it was. Here comes the right hand. See that right hand? It was yeah. the right hand. Mind you, you had already landed two big left hooks that hurt him there to set up that right hand. But it was a good combination, Jerry. Listen, uh, he didn't really get in a solid shot at you, but you did get hit some. Were you thinking about that moment when you'd have the first blow land in anger on you? Well, no, I, I, uh, I was I was pretty swaying with the punches. I've learned to sway with the punches a little more to take the, the sting out of them. And uh, it just seemed to work pretty well. But like I said, I had a lot of rust. And, successful today. Not, not taking anything away from Philip Brown, who's 22 and 0. And I just want to keep on the winning streak and get back up and fight for the championship. They beat Larry Holmes. Doesn't really matter to me anymore. Uh, there's a lot of champions up there. I want to have a few fights and get back my, my timing and everything down and challenge for the title again. It sounds like uh, Larry Holmes has uh, said in the recent days that he will not fight you again. Uh, does that concern you? You've already indicated you'd be happy for any title. I'll tell you, for the first year, it did concern me very much because uh, I wasn't myself in the fight with Larry Holmes, but as time went on, I just realized, hey, it's in the past. I'm not living for the past anymore. I'm looking for the future, and I don't need Larry Holmes. I want to fight and do the right thing to get myself to rank to be number one and fight for the title again and be successful this time. Holmes is not man enough to fight him. Okay, well, that's what Dennis Rappaport says, and uh, we congratulate Jerry Cooney on his four-round knockout of Phil Brown. We'll be back with...